I want to share with you my testimony of how God delivered me from the hands of Boko Haram. It all started right in the days of my university days uh, while I was undergoing my studies of veterinary medicine in the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, University of Meduguri, Borno State, Nigeria. Uh, there was a particular day we discovered that the washroom closest to my room, someone will come in and defecate on Quran and go his way, go away. And then the other place people decide to accuse me that I was the one responsible for that act. But I didn't do it because I don't, uh, I was not the one that did it. So eventually they sought to kill me one day and I went to read in my faculty. I came back to my room by, at 10 p.m. I lie down to sleep on the bed and then the Spirit of God woke me up from sleep and said, Mike, leave this room now. I tried to overcome that voice to lie down to sleep because I was tired. I wanted to rest. And then the Spirit of God insisted and said, Mike, leave this room now. The moment I left the room, not knowing they had stationed people around to monitor my movement in and out, and eventually they came, boggled into the room and wanted to kill me. But when they came in, they found out I wasn't in the room. I had escaped. So this continued with threats and persecution until 2013, when I was invited to preach in KB State, bringing KB. And um, on my way to bringing KB, first of all, I missed two flights and then decided to go by public transport, road transportation and got to a particular point, and I felt it was already night, I wouldn't need to continue with the journey. So I called on the pastor, he invited me to lay a complaint to him that, why can't he allow me to sleep in a hotel in this place, so that the next day in the morning, he could uh, expect me in the crusade ground. He pleaded with me that if I sleep in that town at that particular time, I won't be able to make it up to the next day, to the program the next day. Or if I made it, I would be so tired. So he pleaded with me to move to the next town, neighboring town, so that I could reduce the road and the stress of the journey the next day. After he suggested I sleep in the nearby town, which is two hours away from Contagora, I agreed with him. So I went back to the driver. I collected back my money. As I was walking away from that car, that taxi, a young man saw me and called me and said, are you not my Kesambo? I pretended as if I didn't hear him. He pursued after me and insisted that he knows me, I am my Kesambo. We lived in the same hostel while I was in the university. At that junction, I, I consented. I said, yes, I am my Kesambo. Do you know me? He said, yes, he knew me. I ordered a car to bring in KB, I mean to Yaori which was the town the pastor, my host pastor suggested I go to stay for the night. When I boarded that car, to cut a long story short, all I remember quite later was, I found myself in the bush. I woke up from sleep. My eyes, I discovered my eyes were blindfolded. My hands were tied with rope. My legs as well was tied with rope. And they removed the blindfold. And I opened my eyes and saw that I was in the midst of six heavily armed people. And they introduced themselves to me as Boko Haram. The blindfold that they used to blindfold me was removed. I could see my immediate environment. I saw six heavily armed people. And I looked at my right hand side. I saw a young lady that was beheaded. The knife was still even on her neck. Blood was still gushing out, fresh blood. I became afraid. Fear came over me and I began to cry. As I was crying, I was pleading with them to, for, to spare my life. And I told them, if it is money they're looking for, I have people I could give them their telephone numbers and they would give them all the money they wanted. They said to me, it wasn't money we were looking for, that they have money. The assignment was to kill me, and today they've got me, they were going to kill me. 
So, I couldn't pray at that time. I couldn't sing. I couldn't do anything because I was just totally shut down. But suddenly, I had a voice talking to my ears. And it was reading a particular portion of the scriptures, which says, Yea, though thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy road and thy staff, they comfort me. I so much felt the mighty presence of God, such that if I, as if, if I stretched forth my hand, I was going to touch God. The presence of God was so mighty. So at that point, I began to pray. I got the strength, I got the grace. I also got the inspiration to pray because I've never prayed in all these things that happened because I lacked the strength, I didn't have the grace, I didn't have the inspiration to pray. But after this voice spoke to me, this reading this scripture, portion of the scripture in Psalm 23 verse 4 to me, and I now got the inspiration, and I now got the strength, and I now got the grace to begin to pray and to seek the face of The Bible says that I will look unto the hills. Whence coming my help? My help coming from the Lord God Almighty. So I resorted to pray because I've got strength, I've got inspiration, I've got the grace to pray. So as I kept praying, then their leader now commanded them to say, they should shoot me. I was only waiting for they hear the sound of the rifle and then I, I, I die. I never believe and imagine that the bullet or the gun will not respond. But surprisingly, as the leader started shooting me, uh -uh, I just heard kak, 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 kak. The second person tried to shoot kak, 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 kak. The third person, to the sixth person, this was all the sound I was hearing. It amazes me at the great deliverance God has wrought in my own life. That physical gun could not respond because the Bible says, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. And no weapon, whether the weapon is manufactured in Russia or UK or anywhere, shall not prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, that shall condemn. So, at this instance, the gun could not respond. One of them got angry, urinated on his rifle. Now, the significance of urinating on a rifle in African science or African magic. Uh, it is believed that urine can break the power of charm. So to them, they were thinking, I had a lot of charm, that's why the gun is not responding, and that's why the gun cannot, the bullet cannot come out, the gun cannot make any noise. So they thought if they could urinate on their rifle, they could break the power of the charm I had. But I, had, I didn't have any charm. I'm a child of God. I'm a minister of the gospel. All I had was Jesus. Then they lifted up their, one of the little of their legs and hit me on the neck. I fell on the floor. They brought me back to my knee and said to me, we will kill you. You will eat your flesh. You will drink your blood. And while they threatened to kill me and cut me in pieces, into pieces, I had gained some courage to face them. They started contemplating, what do we do to kill this person? One of them said there is acid and there's poison. So their commander instructed one of them to go and mix the poison and the acid so that I could drink and just die. Do you remember Daniel was thrown into the den of lions and lions that you are touching? Do you remember Peter was locked up in the prison and was to be killed, but God opened the door of the prison miraculously? Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the burning fiery furnace and no hurt was done to them? This is the awesome power of God. And I want to let you know that whatever situation you have, whatever condition you find yourself, don't give up. Still call upon the name of the Lord because it is when you call upon the name of the Lord that you will be saved. They brought acid and poison mixed together in a bottle and presented it to me and said, I should take and drink. I said to them, no, I won't drink. They coerced me to drink. I said, no, I won't drink. After a little while, as we chided, suddenly I saw a bright light like the star falling out from the sky, descending speedily. So that got my attention. That attracted my attention. As I focused on that light, suddenly 
I saw the light shone and surrounded me. When I saw the light shone and surrounded me, I looked up to the sky. When I looked up to the sky, I only saw the face of an angel. When I saw the face of the angel, I focused on the face of the angel. And he did me a sign language with his son, I should take that drink. So I told him, I said, after I prayed, I said, give me the poison and the acid. They gave it to me. I prayed on it and I put it in my mouth and I started drinking. I drank all the content of that bottle, which was acid and poison. And I released the bottle out of my hand and nothing happened to me. When nothing happened to me, the angel of the Lord stretched forth his leg from the sky into our midst because the six of them surrounded me. And they all fell down. A new strength came on me. All the rope, they tied my leg. All the rope, they tied my hand, got loose. I jumped up and I began to run. The angel was in the sky directing me on the direction to follow. I was following the direction the angel had taken until I got to a point, I got so exhausted that I fell down. When I fell down, the angel came down from the sky, picked me up on my left hand side and rested me on his shoulder and was running with me on the ground. He ran with me and at random and took me to under one big tree and threw me on the floor as I was panting and gasping for air. The angel sternly looked at me and asked me a question. He said, do you know who am I? I said, no, I don't know you. He said, I am Angel Michael. Jesus sent me from heaven to this place to deliver you from the shadow of death and from the hands of your enemies, those that hated you. Lie down and rest here for a little while. I am coming back. Suddenly, under that tree, a deep sleep took me over. I slept so deeply. After a long while, in my sleep, I felt somebody was tapping me to wake me up from sleep. When I opened my eyes, I saw three persons standing beside me while I was lying down. So I got scared and I jumped up and I wanted to run. The angel held me and pinned me down. So I asked him, I said, who are you? He said, I am Angel Michael. And he said, and I asked him, what about the two other people? He said, no, don't worry. I will tell you about them. They are angels. I will tell you about them. So we sat down under that tree spontaneously. We began to sing heavenly song and began to worship God. We sang for a, a short while. The angel began to read to me the scriptures from Psalm 23, from verse 1 to the end. Reading to me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy road and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The angel read this scripture and pointed to me and said, these two people are angels. That one over there, his name is goodness. This one over here, his name is mercy. That after he rescued me from the hands of the people, Jesus asked him to return back to heaven and had deployed two more angels to go down with him to me on earth, that he has released these people, these angels for my security, and that they will go with me wheresoever I go preaching this gospel. So, and then he asked me a question, that, do I know Kaduna? I said, yes, I know Kaduna. He said, okay, I'm taking you to Kaduna from here. That was how we stood up and walked a long distance, very long distance. And as we walk that distance, we approach the main uh, expressway. I started hearing the sounds of cars and vehicles and human trafficking, human movement. 
We got beside the road, we saw a saloon car that was parked. The two angels, goodness and mercy, entered the front doors while myself and Angel Michael entered the back seat. We entered that car and they began to drive. We drove that car until we got to a place. The angels told me, this is the city of Kaduna. Kaduna is a, is a northern city in northwestern Nigeria. We got to Kaduna and the angel said, you will alight at a certain place. When you alight in that place, cross over to the other side of the road. Remember, one of your phones is in your bag. Pick it up, call your pastor. He will arrange how they will pick you from there. So, I alighted from the car and crossed over to the other side of the road. Now, this was what I remembered. Quite later, I discovered I woke up from sleep in a gutter. My own bag I was traveling with was beside me. My suit jacket was spread on the floor inside the gutter and I was lying down on the suit jacket. So I woke up from sleep. I started looking around. Where am I? Which environment am I now? See my bag. I look like a mad person. Someone who just nearly got mad. You know, you carry good, decent things around until the, the situation gets bad. So I was wondering. Then suddenly, my memory began to open up. I now remember that, yes, yesterday I was on my way to Brilliant KB. I got to Contagora, which is a town in Niger State. And when I got to Contagora, all the things I narrated from the beginning till now happened in Contagora. So my memory just opened up and I remembered everything that happened. And I discovered that I was directly opposite a police station. And opposite that police station is uh, in the gutter where I was lying down. My bag was with me. How, does, how my bag came to where I was in the gutter, I didn't know. How my suit jacket came to where I was lying down inside the gutter, I didn't know. So I remember the angel told me, when you cross the other side of the road, remember your phone is in your bag. Pick it up, switch it on, because I had two phones then. And because the journey was going to be a night journey, so I decided to preserve the battery life of one of the phones so that whatever happened, I would still be communicating with those people that invited me to preach. So I owned the phone and I called my own pastor. He, who was already my senior pastor then, who was already in the crusade ground, having the crusade before I could join them. So that was how the whole thing happened. I picked the phone, I called the pastor, and I told him, this is my guest boy. He said, what? You have been found, you have been missing for the past two days, yesterday. We've been looking for you. Where are you? When he asked me, where are you? I now remember, I need to know my environment. I looked up, I saw that I was directly opposite a police station. So I called, I told him, this is the police station where I was. And then he put up a call to an air commodore. He's retired now, but then he was still active in service. Air commodore in the Nigerian Air Force, who is one of our brother. Presently, he's my companion in the ministry. He's with me. We travel together most often for preaching. So the air commodore called the various leaders of the ministry I was with at that time. They came to that spot and picked me up from the gutter and took me to the house of the air commodore. This is my angelic deliverance and testimony of how God delivered me from the Boko Haram sect. Now, how do the world knew that Boko Haram had kidnapped me and abducted me, by the way? They used my phone to send an SMS, a text message to my wife. First of all, they told her that we have captured him. Your husband is dead. Come and pick his dead body. Then after a few minutes, they sent another SMS to her telling that don't bother looking for him because you won't find him. We've carried his body away. So my own family was thrown into confusion. 
they began to mourn my death while I was still alive, unknown to them. This was how my wife now called a senior pastor then and other brethren. And then the Facebook, those on social media, picked it up and started praying and started wailing, started mourning, and eventually, here am I, I'm still alive. Why do we share this? Number one, to show you the truth and the faithfulness of God in keeping us. If God gives you an assignment or you are a child of God, you're praying for protection in the midst of provocation, in the midst of agitation. God is able. The scripture said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And this is a living proof that God protects. And if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you're going to get protection. Number two, this is to encourage believers that God is almighty, is awesome, is all-powerful. That there is no circumstances you find yourself that you can give up and not to pray. Even when you are in the mouth of the lion, as Paul the Apostle say, you can still be delivered. So this is to testify about the faithfulness of God, the truth of God, and the power of God to keep and to deliver and to protect us from every form of intimidation, every form of agitation, and to prove that God hears and answers prayer. So, this is my testimony. The details of this testimony is going to be in a book titled Under the Shadow of the Almighty. This book will soon come out in print. You will get the details of all that happened and transpired in that book. Thank you so much. I'm your fellow brother in tribulation. We keep praying for one another. We pray for those who are in distress, pray for those who are in problem, pray for those who are doing the work of God in the most difficult place on the surface of the earth. And we trust that God will help you. God will keep us in his righteousness. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, in addition to what I've just shared with you, I, as I go around the whole world preaching this gospel, there are a lot of miracles God is doing in my own life. But significantly, um, in the year 2003, when this God gave me this testimony, I was going all over the place preaching the gospel. In the month of October of that same year, I had an attack on my leg, my right leg. I was in the university then. Suddenly, on a particular Monday, I was in church for Bible study. This right leg got paralyzed and I was taken to hospital, the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital. And there in the hospital, I was admitted for 10 days and 10 nights. The doctors, the professor, and the consultant, the student doctor in training, they will all come in their team of doctors, about 10, 11, 15, 18 sometimes, for what round to find out what might be the problem, what might be the cause of this paralysis. The whole right leg was paralyzed. I was on wheelchair for 10 days. They carried out every single test that suggests to them that could lead them in their investigation to know what was the problem with the leg. All the tests they carried out proved abortive. Eventually, they discovered that the right leg was shrinking, the skin was wrinkling, and the leg was reducing in size. The degenerative changes that took place on this leg was so fast. Within 10 days, my leg was already becoming smaller than the other and was not responding to impulse, was not responding to pain, was not responding to... They would carry a 10-gauge needle and inject it into the leg to see whether I could feel some pain. I wasn't feeling any pain. So when the doctor consultant came and discovered that the leg was shrinking, and was becoming smaller than the other. He recommended physiotherapy and I should be using crutches to exercise the leg. So at that point, I turned to the wall to seek the face of God. 
at around 1 p.m. in the afternoon, 2 p.m., 2 o'clock, in the teaching hospital, because that ward is male medical ward. Every single patient in that ward is either you have paralysis or stroke or partial stroke. I was admitted into that ward, and Jesus walked into the ward that fateful afternoon, sat beside my bed and said, my son, I am Jesus. I've come in response to the prayer of the saint. I've come to heal you. I love this generation. In this world you have tribulation, but in me you will have peace. But be of good cheer, because you have overcome the world. Devil has wished you dead, but I love this generation. That's why I've come to heal you. Within one second, the Lord removed this leg that was bad and fixed me, because he came with leg, kidney, and a liver, and fixed this right leg on my leg and walked away. Suddenly, I stood up on my bed, walked out. Opposite my bed directly was a Muslim who has been lying down on his sick bed. He had complete stroke. He couldn't walk, he can't raise his hand. They take, they bath him there, he urinate there, he defecates on the sick bed. When I stood up and walked out of my apartment in the hospital, that man was a Muslim. When he saw me on my two legs walking, he screamed and shouted. He said, what? You can walk? The power of God hit him. And that man stood up to walk for the first time in six months. The records are there in the teaching hospital. This is what God did. The miracle God performed to authenticate the calling that he has sent me into all the world to preach this gospel and to bring sinners and sent to the knowledge of the truth. So this is my testimony. And lots more God has done in my own life to encourage me and to encourage believers as well of the power of God and what God can do and what the grace of God can do in the life of a man who gives himself over to the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you.